The Army will build at least two multi-domain task forces in the Pacific and another one in Europe. Those MDTFs will provide long-range precision fires and intelligence, cyber, electronic warfare, space, and other capabilities. The Army will focus on how to staff those task forces as it stands them up. General James McConville is Chief of Staff of the Army. General McConville, welcome back on the program. Thanks for coming on. You're, doing these, you're, you're standing these task forces up at the same time that you're focused on transitioning from what you call an industrial age talent management system in the Army to a digital age uh, talent management system. How are you approaching that transformation in an environment that is, uh, is as tradition heavy as the Army is, sir? Well, I think, uh, first of all, we're recognizing uh, the importance of uh, technology and how it's going to affect the, uh, the future uh, warfighter or competition, if you will. And so what we realize is that we've had an industrial age personnel management system that has worked fine uh, over the last uh, many years. But if we move into the future, we move, need to move to a 21st century talent management system, which recognizes every soldier as an individual with that knowledge, skills, and behavior. And that way we can manage and incentivize them to have uh, the talents we need. And you talked about the multi-domain task force, uh, which is going to have an uh, intelligence, information operations, cyber, electronic warfare, and, and space capabilities. And, and what we recognize in the future, we're going to need soldiers uh, that can do artificial intelligence, that can do uh, data management that can write software uh, on the battlefield. So we're going to have to manage those soldiers in a special way. How much of that management do you have the license to be able to do by changing systems internally? How much of that has to come from OSD, the Secretary of Defense, from Congress? Well, I think we, ha we have the, the authorities to do it right now. We are doing it. What, what, what I want to put in place is, is a system uh, that can manage those soldiers the way we need to manage them. I, I, I suggest that right now in the Army, we, we manage soldiers uh, basic, basically on their military occupational specialty uh, in their ranks. So they're a sergeant of engineers or they're a captain of infantry. And, and what we need to know is much more about the soldiers' knowledge, skills, behaviors, and even their preferences. What do they want to do? Where do they want to go? And, and that's the way we think we will get the best results. How much of that will come from the individual soldier and how much of that will com come from who that soldier reports to? Well, it's a, it's a little of both. Um, you know, we're putting in place an integrated personnel and, and pay system uh, that is going to bring all three components of the United States Army together on one personnel system. And then the way we manage our troops uh, will be different than we manage uh, right now, we're just uh, standing up a we're standing up a software factory for the army. We're, we're running a, a, a major effort called Project Convergence, where we're bringing together all our sensors, our shooters, and tied together with an integrated battle command system and, and artificial intelligence. And what we realized when we ran our first uh, demonstration of this capability is that we need uh, soldiers that can write software uh, on the battlefield. And, and so we've, we've reached out. Uh, we have a tremendous amount of soldiers that um, have that talent, that code, that write, want to write software. And now we're going to bring them in uh, to this capability. And then we need to have a management capability to make sure they're promoted and they're incentivized for their talents. Last time you were on the program, General, we talked about Project Convergence and how it eventually will integrate into JADC2. What are the implications for that, for that interaction with the other branches, for the joint force in the way the Army internally evaluates its talent and determines who needs to be where and have what skills in what locations? Well, first of all, I think it's absolutely critical that all the services uh, come together and integrate uh, into a system which uh, we're actually calling CJAD C2, Combined Joint All Domain Command and Control. We, we put the C on there because as we take a look at uh, future uh, operations, we, we believe we'll always always be uh, with our allies and partners. So we, we need to bring them into the command and control system. And then with the joint force, we're always gonna operate as a joint force. And we need 
uh, soldiers, non-commissioned officers, and, and officers that understand the importance of the joint force and can operate within a joint force construct. Um, you mentioned the new talent management system, ATAP, that you're undertaking. Um, will that eventually become the ultimate um, manager, the ultimate environment for uh, determining where soldiers go and the skills that you want them to determine? Or will there be other measures of uh, what soldiers uh, can and, and should be capable of doing? Yeah, I think you, you mentioned the, you know, the, the Army ta uh, Talent Alignment Program that we're using right now. We, we see this as, as kind of like a 1-0 system. Uh, once we get the integrated uh, personnel and pay system uh, in place and we start to integrate artificial intelligence and some other uh, more efficient data management systems. I, I think what we're going to see is it, it's going to be uh, uh, people making decisions based on enabled uh, by the technology that we're going to have in place. And so what will happen in the future, if you're looking for a, a soldier with a certain skill set, you'll be able to look across the entire Army, uh, regular Army, National Guard, and Reserves, and, and put a feeler out there and say, hey, who wants to be a coder? And then we'll be able to draw from the entire army. We're doing that right now, but it's really not at the, at the efficiency that we would like to see. General McConville, thank you very much for your time today. I appreciate it, sir. Well, thank you, Francis. It's great to be with you.